folks, we've talked about the mobile phase. And the mobile phase is no good if the mobile phase can't be mobile. So there's going to be a piece of the equipment that's going to be pretty important. And the reason that we didn't really see this in gas chromatography is because it really didn't need it. That mobile phase was very mobile on its own. It was helium. It could actually go through the column without any other kind of help that needs to become associated with it. The pump, though, for liquid chromatography, and that includes ion chromatography, the whole purpose of it is to take the mobile phase and push it through the instrument. If you just think that you can turn this instrument on, and if you think that this mobile phase will just flow through the tubing without any force behind it to push it through, you got another thing coming. You're going to be waiting there forever for a mobile phase to come through, and it won't even come through. There's too much. So when the mobile phase hits the column, inside of this column, and we've not really talked about it yet, but inside of this column, stationary phase. And mobile phase gets pumped up through the bottom, not from the top. So mobile phase is pushed up through the bottom, and it goes slowly up and out of the column. These particles are super, super tiny stationary phase wise and it's going to be very hard for that liquid to be pushed naturally through the column so because of that we need a little bit of pressure we have to have something in the system that is okay with building the pressure up so that we can push this liquid through that stationary phase which is like a little tiny sponge Okay, so the purpose of the pump, and sometimes we call this the high-pressure pump. You can kind of understand why now. That high-pressure pump creates high pressure, and that high pressure is meant to push the mobile phase through your column. So this high-pressure pump is going to be very important. That's its sole job. And if this pump shuts down, or if the pump malfunctions, your machine is no good. It's almost like the heart of the machine in a way. When this kerplunks, the whole instrument goes down. So it's very important for you to understand the pump. It's very important for you to understand maintenance that's associated with the pump. And we're going to have to talk a little bit about some of that maintenance and some of the things that you can do to make sure that that pump stays A-OK. -okay. Uh, inside of this pump there's going to be things that we call pistons. And a double piston is not uncommon. And we'll take a look at what those things actually look like in just a second. But this is your traditional type of setup that comes along with the pump, and we'll see that. As far as the pump, the material that it's made out of, it has to be very inert, meaning that it's non-reactive. You know, the last thing that we want is to pump a sample through, and that sample and the matrix of that sample maybe react with the materials that the pump is made of. We don't want that, right? The same thing happens with our mobile phases. This pump is going to see the mobile phase all the time. And the last thing that you want is for that mobile phase to react with the pump and the materials of the pump and start to degrade it. So it's very important for the pump to be made out of pretty stable material that is very non-reactive, that is very inert, that withstands maybe acidity or alkalinity in the mobile phases or in your sample. Not only that, but all of the pieces and the parts that make up the pump have to be inert as well. Uh, normally, this material that they use is called PEEK, P-E-E-K. And P-E-E-K, PEEK, is going to stand for poly, then there's a bracket, ether, ether, ketone. That bracket tells you what is poly about it. And poly basically means many, 
many units. So we have many units of this ether, ether, ketone stuff that basically gets lined up. A polymer is made. You can kind of think of it as a plastic if you want to. And this material is very inert and chemical resistant. Well, not only are pieces of the pump and parts of the pump made out of peak, but also the majority of the tubing that you see in ion chromatography is also made out of peak. Another good thing about peak is that, yep, it's chemical resistant, which is what we wanted, but it can also withstand very high pressures. Uh, you don't really want to use a machine, and that machine's going to take this little tiny bitty tubing and basically bust it open at the seams. And if you have that happen, you're going to have leaks all the time. So you need some type of material that is okay with pretty high pressures that get sent through the machine and out the other end. And Peak Tubing does a wonderful job for that end as well. All right. So good thing about Peak, number one, it's chemical resistant and it's very inert. It's not going to be reactive. And number two, it can withstand very high pressure. So you're going to see this peak tubing not just in IC, but you're also going to see it in HPLC. And you're going to see it really in any type of LC method that is out there. Anything dealing with liquid mobile phases traditionally go the route of peak tubing because it's done such a good job uh, doing what it's supposed to do with very little problems that I need to take care of as a user. All right. So let's take a look at this pump that we are talking about. What does this high-pressure pump look like? Well, hold on. Let me show you a picture. So here's an image of the internal of the IC instrument that you're going to see in our laboratory. So this is really for the Metrome ion chromatography system. However, most of the ion chromatography systems, they look very similar to this. And quite actually, any HPLC instrument will also have a very similar look on the inside of it. So imagine for a minute that the mobile phase is getting pumped. And I'm just ignoring all the other pieces of the equipment right now. I'm only focused at the pump that's doing that mobile phase job. And right here it is. It's this kind of box that you're sitting seeing over to the left-hand side. That is our high-pressure pump in the system. All right. The way that Metro makes these instruments is that they kind of put it up close and personal for you. So it's very easily accessible. It is right in the very front. Uh, they give you all the necessary tools that you need in order to take these four screws off. So you're seeing two screws up here at the top and you're seeing two screws down here at the bottom. And then this whole thing basically pulls out and you will have access to all of your pump uh, consumables and your pistons at that point. So this is the high pressure pump that we're talking about. And over here to the left hand side, I'm going to click this link that tells me how to dismantle the pump head. So we're probably not going to do this in the lab. And the reason that we're not going to do it is basically because it can cause some problems and it can give us some shutdown if we're not careful with that. Meaning that if we put it in the wrong way, we're going to get leaks. And we don't really like to take care of leaks when you have labs due and you have data that we need to give to you. So I'm going to hit the play here. And what you're going to see is that this person is um, basically loosening the LU. This eluent, uh, it's coming from this clear piece of tubing that's right here, okay? So the eluent's going to be coming in this way, and what we want to do is that we want to make sure that uh, this eluent stops. Uh, if What you're seeing is that there's a cap being placed onto that piece of tubing, and the reason the cap is getting placed onto there is if I just let this thing flow with no cap, 
this mobile phase is basically going to get sucked through that tubing line. You know, it's kind of like softening gas. If you've ever had to do that and you've run out of gas and you have that gas container and you uh, put the hose down into the gas container and you suck on the hose until you create some of that suction and then you can jam it down into your gas tank and it just flows naturally right from that point on if you do it the right way. The same thing is happening here. So we need to put a cap onto that tubing. If not, it's just going to constantly flood. My mobile phase is going to go everywhere and I'm just wasting it. So that and then after that, you're going to see them basically uh, unhook the pump from a different position. So up here at the very top, you're seeing that screw being taken off. And the reason is because these two pieces are constricting that pump. It's kind of locking it into place. And you need to loosen those if you're going to take the pump out. At this point, those screws are getting unloosed with an hour, uh, um, loosened up with an Allen wrench or a hex wrench. And then now you're seeing basically the internals of the pump here at the very end. I'm going to kind of quickly pause it if I can do it fast enough. Look at this. Ah. All right. So on the inside, uh, there's basically going to be an area that could get kind of crudded up and pretty nasty. So what you want to do is that when you take this pump off, normally what happens is that I'll take a chem wipe and I'll spray it down with some alcohol, maybe methanol or isopropyl alcohol, and I just kind of give it a good wipe down on the inside of here. Uh, if this is getting all of your trash and all of the stuff that's coming along, then there is a chance and a possibility that that trash and contamination, uh, crud, can build up on the inside of this chamber. So just give it a quick wipe down, uh, a quick rinse, no big deal there, uh, but just keep all of the system clean. And that includes what your pistons and stuff are going into at that moment in time. All right. So now over here to the side, I'm going to hit this link that says replacing the seals. Remember, I told you that there's things on the inside of the pump. And on the inside of the pump, these are things that you can do on your own. And you don't need any kind of person to come out to do this maintenance for you. Uh, right here are the dual pistons. Dual means two. So you see one there and one there. Uh, this kind of metal bar that's sticking up out of the top, uh, this thing is basically going to slide in and out, in and out, in and out. And that kind of creates your pumping action or your sucking action and all of the force that needs to be behind the mobile phase to push it through the column and out the other end. So what you're in this video is the person's going to first take the wrench and they're going to loosen up these pistons and you're going to have to be very careful with that because you can easily scratch them and you can easily break them as well. So they're going to unscrew the first one and it just kind of pops out of there. No big deal. Clean that off with methanol if you have to or isopropyl alcohol. And I don't think in the video they're going to do this, but you can also take this one off as well in the same form, in the same fashion. No big issue. They're both made the same. Uh, and you can clean that one off too at the same time. The next thing that they're going to do is that they're going to go through and kind of pop out that holder. Uh, this is kind of a guide in a way to kind of take the sample and the piston where it needs to go to. Now what you're seeing is that this person has taken a fancy little tool that Metrome has given you in your supply kit. You should have one of those around somewhere. And that tool is to go in and basically change these valves. Uh, sometimes you can clean them and sometimes a good kind of healthy rinse with isopropyl alcohol or methanol will do the job. But sometimes they're going to have to be replaced. All right, so that's what you're seeing here. It's the replacement of those little um, kind of O-rings is normally what I would call them, or seals, okay? So that tool gets basically screwed down into where the seal is at, and you just kind of pop it out of there. And right there is your seal at the end of that tube, and we're going to trash that one. We're going to throw it away, and now we're going to go get a new seal that we can put down on the inside of that pump. If these seals go bad... What's going to happen is that your pump begins to leak. And if you have a leaky pump, then what's going to happen is your flow rates are not going to stay the same. Your pressure cannot build up. You're going to have leaks all over on the inside of the instrument. And, you know, good luck if the instrument runs for you at that time. So you're probably not going to be able to do anything with it at all. 
So now this person's going to have uh, this kind of uh, jar back here in the back. Uh, these uh, seals are probably stored in some kind of alcohol just to keep them clean. There they are. And now there's an extra little tool in the kit that you just pop that seal back onto the bottom. And that gets guided back into the pump. And that same tool that you use to kind of screw that thing out of there with, well, that basically pops that new seal back into place. And that's all that you've got to do. Uh, the issue here, though, is if you seat the seal in there the wrong way the first time, then you will have to take it back out and throw it away. Normally, you don't get a second and third chance with the way that these are made. So if you don't do the job the proper way the first time, then these seals need to be thrown away, garbaged, don't use them again, don't save them for any kind of purpose, and then you need a new one to go on in its place. All right. So that's as easy as it is to change out a pump seal on the inside of that instrument. You would need to do it to the left hand one and you probably need to do it to the right hand one too at the same time. Keep it consistent. If you're going to replace one, this sucker's already off. So you might as well do it to both sides while you have it off. I mean, no big issue there at all, right? So as long as you've got the specialized tools, to kind of guide you into those areas, to kind of replace those seals, so that way you don't have to worry about, did I put it in there the right way? Do I have enough force on it? This process is pretty easy, and anyone can basically do it. So don't pay thousands of dollars for someone to come out and do this job for you. All right? So that is what we would call replacing the seals on the inside of the pump. Again, those seals are important because it seals the pump off. It prevents the leaks. Mobile phase is coming through there. You got to make sure that that mobile phase is not leaking out of the system. You want to make sure that everything stays very tight and that the pressure can be built up. And those seals, faulty seals at least, will not allow you to do that. All right. So in the next video, we'll continue on with some of this pump maintenance that we're seeing here on the Metrum's website.